really, really big opportunities. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be just... All right, folks, I think we're getting ready to start here. I want to uh, thank you very much for, for being here. And this is significant, uh, significant in several ways. One, significant to me because I only live a mile up the road here. And uh, I can't tell you what a uh, pleasure it is to, to have this complete. It's significant because it marks the, uh, the beginning of the end for a project that we've all seen grow. Uh, it's also significant because it means that Harlan County now is open for business and we can literally close the floodgates and have the, uh, the fear of flooding, but we're also open for business. And today we're here to, to celebrate you and your accomplishments because you've been a vital, vital part of that. I'm going to open the ceremony up, uh, the program up today with the Harlan Mayor, Danny Howard. Danny? Thank you, Tony. And as mayor of um, Harlan, I'd uh, like to take this time to thank you uh, for being here today and offer my congratulations to everyone who has been involved in the Harlan Project and the Kentucky Pride Partnership. These innovative flood control projects protect our families and our businesses from the Cumberland River and demonstrates the value of successful Pride team. In this day and time, we need to encourage this type <clears throat> of competitive work ethic. This team success were completed according to schedule and within the allocated budget and is a testimony to willingness of all parties to work together toward a common goal. We will begin today's ceremony with the invocation led by Reverend Nathan Reed, pastor of the Loyal Church of Christ. Reverend Reed. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your grace and for your care. And on this day, we celebrate the first gift that you have given to humanity, our earth. Thank you for allowing us to be caretakers and stewards of that which you have given. As such, as leaders, as citizens, it is our responsibility to do the best we can to protect earth and one another. And Lord, today, we celebrate that. You remind us as well, Father, as your word says, that unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. And unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. Father, we have done what we can. We entrust it into your hands. And now we ask for your care and your continued support. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reed. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask the uh, Everett High School ROTC to present the colors. And uh, everyone, uh, please stand and remain standing. And we'll ask James Flanagan, a Life Scout, a member of the Boys Choir, to lead us in um, a Pledge of Allegiance. States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Please be seated. Joining us today in our celebration are several people I wish to introduce, and we'll hold our applaud till the end. Um, seated on the platform in front of us is uh, First Brig Brigadier General Robert H. Griffin, commander of uh, Ohio River and Great Lakes Division of the U.S. Army, uh, Army Corps of Engineers. Just camouflage. camouflage over here. Okay. Um, Secretary James Bickford of Kentucky Natural Resources and Environmental Protection. Uh, the Honorable Joseph W. Westfall, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works. And the next gentleman, a lot of us know, um, is Congressman Hal Rogers. I'm going to save this next person, and I'd like to say we have representatives from Lynch, City Council, Benham, uh, City of Cumberland, uh, the Mayor of Everts, the Mayor of, of uh, Lowell, with their City Councils, uh, also Physical Court, and uh, a lot of our special friends. This next person, uh, we're going to see a lot more of her, and I'm glad to say that we will. Uh, and this is her first trip to Harlan County, and I'm sure we're all going to love her as much as we do her husband. Uh, I'd like for you to meet Cynthia Rogers. Awesome. Now, please help me welcome County Judge Executive of Harlan County, Joe Grisha. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to Harlan County and to this dedication ceremony. The ceremony recognizes the end of a wide-ranging Corps of Engineers project and the end of a <clears throat> to protect our county from a hundred-year flood. What we celebrate here today are the combined accomplishments of Kentucky Pride and the partnership between the federal government the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and our great county, Harlan County. It was in 1989 when we broke ground for the construction of these flood projects. And their completion and dedication today allows the residents of Harlan County to sleep easier tonight. For that, we are grateful. And to those involved, we are also grateful. Thank you. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the Honorable Joseph W. Westfall, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works. Secretary Westfall has overall supervision for the Department of the Army Civil Works Program. He is Administrator of the Department of Army Regulatory Programs to protect, restore, and maintain the waters of the United States in the interest of environmental, navigation, and national defense. Additionally, he formulates the program and oversees the budget of the Arlington National Cemetery and the Soldiers and Airmen's Home National Cemetery, Dr. Westfall. Thank you. Congressman Rogers, uh, Mayor Howard, Judge Grisham. It is, uh, it, what, a, what a wonderful day. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful place. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of great reasons for being here today. One of them is uh, this, this wonderful day. The water's low. Uh, we've, we're about finished with the project. Uh, in fact, we'll be finished in a couple of weeks. I'm here with my good friend Hal Rogers, who uh, you all know very well, but who uh, I need to tell you is, uh, is probably uh, the best example of uh, the kind of member of Congress that gets things done because he believes in what he's doing and believes that people need it. And, and I think it's just, uh, it's also, for me personally, a wonderful opportunity to come and be with all of you and visit with people 
in uh, this part of Kentucky and to get for myself a, a sense of the, um, the importance of these kinds of projects. Because, you know, in Washington we're dealing in the billions of dollars and we're dealing with issues uh, uh, that range from environment to public works all over the country. But it's important every once in a while to come down and to see for ourselves what these things really mean to communities. Uh, communities that often don't have the resources to by themselves take care of these kinds of issues and protect themselves against r devastating floods and devastating events that uh, overwhelm them. Uh, we've uh, done a great deal in the last few years to help our communities through FEMA's uh, reorganization and more aggressive uh, management of disasters and through the core that has over 200 years of experience in working uh, with local communities and partnering with the states in, uh, in, in building these kinds of projects. We started this work, by the way, back uh, in the early 1800s when uh, the Continental Congress gave the Army the responsibility to maintain all the navigable waters of the United States. And in 1824, Congress passed legislation making the Corps of Engineers the first agency to essentially regulate water resources and to really move into the cleanup of water, to clean up the debris on the rivers. As you recall, back in those days, it was <clears throat> the river systems that were the only mode or major mode of transportation that brought people to the West. And the West in those years was Kentucky, Ohio. And so the Corps began its long history of, of, of managing and working with rivers in the early part of the 1800s. And over those um, uh, 130, 140 years of development there and into this century, the Corps has not only improved its work, but has learned to adapt. What we're seeing today on this river and what we're seeing in all parts of this country is that we're no longer building those dikes, those cement walls. We're no longer channeling. We're no longer just building a, a roadway for the water to get someplace. We're now building places that are environmentally sound. We're restoring the environment. We're making these kinds of projects more aesthetic so that communities cannot just protect themselves against flood, but can bring back the tourism, can bring back the life of the community back to the river. Uh, Again, let me just say that um, uh, Hal Rogers is instrumental, obviously. Not only does he seek the funding, not only is he in a position to get the funding, but he believes so, so dramatically in the need to help these local communities that um, for us, uh, I've known Hal for 15 years. We're personal friends. We knew each other when I worked in the House of Representatives and, and worked for him, actually, many years ago as, uh, as I directed a caucus for him. Um, that, that, that he spends, you know, 100% of his time in worrying and taking care of his constituents. And, uh, and I'm very proud to, to be here with him. The other reason this project is complete is because of a lot of people uh, of a, uh, who, who work real hard for an organization that I have the, the proud honor of representing. That's the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, Mayor introduced uh, Brigadier General Bob uh, Griffin. He's the new division commander. He has uh, three major, major districts in his division, or actually more than three, but he's got three that are involved in this area, uh, Nashville, Louisville, and, um, and Huntington. And uh, uh, they're responsible for the, for the kind of uh, success that we have across the country. Uh, with us here today is uh, J.C. McDaniel. J.C., why don't you stand up for a second? Yeah. You all know yeah. J.C. Yeah. And I want to I want to just uh, talk about him as a, as the type of individual, not him personally, but he is the type of individual that I think is so essential to these projects. A part of the community, committed to his work, knowledgeable, experienced, a team player, uh, dedicated. Uh, he is the kind of person that I think I'm very proud to to meet when I come to these kinds of projects and see the work that the Army Corps of Engineers is doing it. We're not doing it in a vacuum. We're doing it with the state, with General Bickford and his people, and we're doing it uh, with our other sister federal agencies. And the result today 
is that a program that has grown to $5 billion is making a difference for citizens all over this country. So uh, I congratulate Congressman Rogers for years of perseverance in getting this project done. I congratulate you for the sacrifices that you've made to get it done. And I again thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Westphal. Our, our ceremony today would not be complete without the opportunity to hear from a local resident. Better known as retired U.S. Army Brigadier General James E. Bickford, currently Kentucky's Secretary for Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Cabinet. Secretary Bickford grew up in Harlan County and began his time in the Army, and he served in England, Germany, France, Korea, and Vietnam. While in command of the Defense Fuel Supply Center, he was an important link in supplying virtually needed fuel for Air Forces in one of the fastest wars we ever fought, Desert Storm. He has also been introduced into the Quartermaster's Hall of Fame at Fort Lee, Virginia, and as Cabinet Secretary, he develops and carries out programs to manage as Kentucky's land, air, and water resources to ensure their protection and balanced use. Please welcome a son of Harlan County and Kentucky's Natural Resource Environmental Protection Cabinet Secretary, Jim Beckford. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be home. This is nice. What a beautiful homecoming weather this is. It couldn't have been pretty. But you know, I'm sitting here and I'm looking, you know, one of my responsibilities is is looking at the water supply for the state and uh, it's getting pretty low but I sure am glad to know that when those heavy rains come like I've seen them and you've seen them and everybody else that we got something that's going to handle it this time and it's not going to be in everybody's house in Harlan uh, so it's it's a great thing to see the other thing that I saw when I flew in here today is something we've been working hard on Harlan's getting cleaner folks Harlan County's getting cleaner. It's getting cleaner. And you know the people that are making it are you all and our kids and everybody out here. It was it's a pleasure to see it and I'm just tickled to death. We were talking, Hal Rogers and I were talking, we did this thing about three years ago when we formed Pride. We never imagined that it would pick up steam like it has. And that people, everybody in the county is getting involved in it. And that's great. So Harlan County is not only getting clean, it's getting its flood control taken care of, and now we need to move on and move into seeing what we can do about some tourism. We've got beautiful places sitting out here. Blanton Forest, my God, what a wonderful place. There's all kinds of places around here that, that have the potential. Benham, lots of places around. So we're going to work hard on that. I just want to say congratulations to you, and I want to say thank you for cleaning up Harlan County. Thank you, Secretary Bigford. This next person I really don't need to introduce is our, our today's keynote speaker, Congressman Hal Rogers, because he's been well known by the men and women of Harlan County. During Congressman Rogers' 10-year term in office, he has earned a reputation for getting things done and putting the concerns of the people in his district first and foremost. His philosophy has led us to, a new, to the newest project, the Kentucky Pride, and the results can be seen in communities throughout the 5th District. Clean rivers and streams and flood control projects in the Cumberland and Big Sandy basins new business and education projects in Somerset, Whitesburg, and Hazard, a music arts center in Prestonsburg, and the reconstruction of key roadways to serve Ap the Appalachian region. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a true friend of Harlan County, Congressman Hal Rogers. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for the nice, nice welcome. Thank you, Danny, Mayor, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And I'm like uh, Secretary Bickford. What a gorgeous place to be on, on this date or any other date. I'm glad that uh, uh, they introduced uh, Cynthia to you. Uh, we, uh, she's, she's from Nashville, Tennessee, as uh, you may know. Uh, we were introduced by the governor of Tennessee, who's a common friend of ours, who introduced us last summer. I was down there playing golf. And we were married in the, in the Tennessee uh, governor's residence uh, five months ago this uh, Friday. At that time, that jacket was orange. <laughs> But I'm fading it out. It's fading out, you see. And before you know it, it's going to be solid blue like that flag right there. But I've got to say to you that she's, she's uh, adopting our state in a wonderful way. And, and uh, so I'm glad that you welcomed her here in Harlan County. I want to thank uh, Tony Turner for not only uh, his great work at the TV station that we all watch. That must be the other station, Tony. <laughs> It's your competition. Is this thing off? This one is. Uh, can you hear okay? I want to thank Tony not only for his great work at the TV station, but he's also, as you know, chairman of the board of the Pride organization in all our 40 counties. He's our leader and doing a great job for us, and I want you to know that uh, we appreciate that work, Tony, that you're doing on, on Pride. And, uh, Judge, it's good to be with you, and... Uh, I want to say a word about uh, Jim Bickford, uh, your native Harlan County, uh, who grew up around Everts. Uh, he is the most he's the most wonderful fellow to work with I think I've ever been around. He and I just happened to be speaking on the platform in Louisville about three or four years ago. I, I didn't know him and he didn't know me, but we found ourselves talking to a group, and I heard his speech and he heard mine, and they were practically identical. And we realized that something was going on here. So we decided we would pool our resources and try to create a, 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 a campaign to clean up at least my part of Kentucky. And that, out of that grew this pride organization. And uh, Jim Bickford has just been a wonderful partner in that and is doing the state of Kentucky a tremendous job in cleaning our whole state up. They've cleaned up hundreds of these huge dumps over the sides of mountains all over this state. 266 of them in our 40 county region. And I just want you to know, uh, General Bickford, here in your home county, how much all of us appreciate your dedication to the people of our state and your country and uh, the work that you've done in pride and also your service to our nation and our military uh, rising to the very elevated rank of general. Thank you very much, my friend. And we have the uh, brass of the uh, Corps of Engineers here all the way from uh, the head man in Washington, Joe Westfall, my friend, Secretary Westfall, who spoke to you, but also uh, General Griffin, uh, who is the commander of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes Division of the Corps of Engineers. That's the most active division of all in the country. Uh, and uh, Major Haggerty, and of course the uh, colonels and their staffs from all three divisions of the Corps of Engineers that work in this part of Kentucky, from Louisville, uh, Huntington, and Nashville. Of course, we're in the Nashville district here. I also want to thank that uh, great uh, color guard from Everts High School, the ROTC program there. Uh, they, they were just precise and very military-like, and we appreciate them. And I'll tell you, this group back here, I've crowed about them from one end of this world to the other, the Harlan Boys Choir is a world treasure. Uh, we had the pleasure of hearing them sing from the steps of the Capitol of the United States on the day that uh, President Bush took his oath of office in January 1989. And I could have uh, been, not been more proud uh, to see that choir standing on the uh, steps of the Capitol up there, leader, and singing to the world that in those beautiful tones that you heard here today. We're proud of you folks. We appreciate you. Thanks for being here today. I grew up in Wayne County uh, near Monticello and then moved back to Somerset after graduation from law school. But all of my life, we didn't have flooding there. 
Oh, we had a little localized flooding, but not a town flood. And all of my life, I grew up reading the newspapers and seeing those awful pictures of places like Harlan, Loyal and Rio Vista and Everts and Williamsburg and Barberville and so on. Every year, practically, having to swim out of floodwaters, seeing the family Bible washed away, seeing your business put out of work, uh, seeing the, the job shut down, seeing your homes flooded with them, losing everything that you had. I read those stories all of my life. And when you uh, did me, I started to say the favor, when you sentenced me to this job <laughs> in uh, January of 1981, the very first thing that I did was to uh, ask the Corps of Engineers to get in a helicopter with me and fly the length of the Upper Cumberland and show me what they could do if they had the money to stop the flooding in these towns. And we spent that first weekend, it was in January, it's cold weather, and we came here and we brought the Corps officials with us and they pointed out what they could do if they had some money. I asked them how much money it would take just for the Harlan project. And they said something like a hundred million dollars. And I fainted. <laughs> As it wound up, you know, it cost $181 million. But I said, okay, I don't know whether we can get $15 to start this project, but we're going to try. And we started. And in a few years, we were able to get the first monies put into studying and doing the detail work on getting these projects underway. Harlan was not the first. Barberville was first. Uh, Pineville was first, then Barberville. And now I can say to you, once this project is dedicated, which we're doing today, the only one remaining is Middlesboro, and it's underway. But a few years ago, we were able to say to the people of Pineville, Kentucky, who suffered flooding as much as anybody, perennially. We were able to say to Pineville after that flood wall and highway was built around it, Pineville will never ever flood again. And then a few years later, we were able to go to Barberville after the flood wall and cut through was finished of the Cumberland down there. And I was able to joyfully say, Barberville will never ever flood again. And the other day, we dedicated the flood wall in, in Williamsburg. And I was able to say from the top of a levee surrounding that city's flood wall that Williamsburg will never, ever flood again. I've had the pleasure of saying that in many other places. I've not yet said that in Harlan County, Kentucky. This project, this is the Phase three of that three-phase project, project, the tunnels was one, the flood wall around Harlan was the other, and this cut through and flood wall at uh, Loyal and Rio Vista is the third and final phase of the most expensive flood project on the Cumberland River. But I'm able to say to you today, and it gives me pleasure to the bottom of my toes to say that you will never ever flood again. So we're here to claim victory and do a little crowing and be happy because now you can plan your lives without having to worry about that cloud on the horizon that might just be the one that would wipe you out. You can look at that cloud now and say, go ahead, rain, make my day. In fact, I wish we could get a rain. Here we are dedicating a flood project in the middle of an extreme drought. Who planned this anyway? But you can plan your lives now without having that uh, worry in, 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 as a dagger in your heart. 
I already see things perking up in, in the towns uh, where the flood protection has come. We've seen businesses renovated in all these towns. New businesses come in. I already see some things happening in Harlem. And I think of all the people who have had a part in this, and there are so many of them. It took local cooperation. It took the state. It took uh, the city, county, cities and county. It took, of course, the federal government. And then there's a lot of people that did things along the way and I see some of them sitting here in this audience today I'm not going to start calling names because I'd leave somebody out but I do want to remember Jeannie Douglas who can't be with us today she was there when the going was tough and I want to remember her today and there are many others I also want to thank Secretary Westfall who's with us today the head man of the Corps of Engineers in Washington uh, he has been a personal involvement in this. In fact, this is his second trip to see the project uh, in about a year. He was here about a few months ago when this was not quite finished. But he has been a true friend uh, for many years of mine, but also a great Secretary of the Army, Under Secretary of the Army for Civilian Affairs. Took a lot of money to do this project, $181 million all told. Yeah, but today after years of effort and millions of dollars, we can now say that the work to keep the Cumberland River out of your homes, your businesses, your streets, your churches is complete. And I can't wait, frankly, to see that rain for two or three reasons, one of which is to water my lawn, the other is to see if this thing will work. <laughs> And I predict that it will because every, every project they've planned and put in place, we've wondered about, but then when the rains come, uh, they were right. These engineers know what they're doing. It's been a tough fight on these projects. It's hard to explain the budget battles that go on in Washington, but suffice it to say that every year when the president sends up his budget for the whole government to the Congress, Every single year, Reagan, Bush, Clinton never would include money for these flood projects. They'd set up a budget that had for these projects zero every year, every one of these projects. At one time, we had eight or nine of them going on simultaneous. And every year, I would, it would force me then to try to figure out a way to earmark the monies for these projects in the Congress overriding the White House every single time. That's not easy. I had a lot of help, of course. But every single year for the dozen years that we've been working on these flood control projects, every one of those years, not a single dollar was included in the budget of the President or the Corps of Engineers when it went to the Congress, and we had to add it in there. And so I'm telling you, I've had to trade a lot of chits <laughs> uh, to get these projects done. In fact, I'm hitchhiking home this afternoon. I've traded my car in. <laughs> but here we are. And so now we can put 110% of our time, our ideas, and our resources not in trying to fight off the floods, but now in ways to create jobs and keep our young people here at home and to create a better life for all of us. Now, Mayor Howard, I inserted language in next year's budget that gives authority for the Corps to help you develop a big major recreation area adjacent to the football field back here. Money's in there. And we still have work to do in Harlan County. Uh, Secretary Westfall, I, I, I want you to know that uh, we still have work to do to protect the Clover Fork. Uh, and the Everts area, and the city of uh, Cumberland, and we'll be talking to you more about that as time passes. <laughs> We've uh, run a lot of water lines and sewer lines to hundreds of homes here in uh, Harlan County. We've put together more than $5 million for the new regional sewer treatment plant that was completed in June and is now up and running, something that I'm very proud of. Just last week, we obtained a uh, million dollar EPA grant for a wastewater line extension, that's a sewer line extension, 
that will let the city of Harlan provide 400 homes in the uh, Everest area with sewer service. We made sure that that money was included in the EPA's budget for the coming year, uh, and I'm happy to say the president signed that law into effect last week, so the money's on the way, and 400 straight pipes will be shut off. You know, protecting our people from flood and mud is just one of the things that we need to work on to make our future a better one for our kids and our grandkids. And one of those ways is to clean up the region. Secretary Bickford already has talked some about pride, but let me mention a few other things. Pride, you know, stands for personal responsibility in a desirable environment. Personal responsibility doing your part and everywhere I go people are really hustling to show their pride and that makes me feel good because when you're proud of your surroundings and proud of keeping your area around you clean it makes you proud to show off other things that you can do it makes us proud of the boys choir it makes us proud of the ROTC it makes us proud of the new street we've got or the new church we built or what have you pride is catching and we find that that's true. As people show pride in cleaning up, they're also showing pride in doing other positive things in their communities. And the people of Harlan County have jumped on this pride thing unlike almost anybody else. You must have more pride here than most anybody else does because you certainly are showing it in cleaning up. You know, businesses don't settle in areas littered with trash. Tourists don't come to see a, a refrigerator in a creek. Retirees don't come to a place where the water can't be swam in or fished in. Eastern Tennessee, with all the tourism dollars coming in there, has prospered. Western North Carolina, with all of the retirements coming to Western North Carolina's mountains, is prospering. Other places in the mountains are securing factories. And it's our turn. First thing we've got to do, though, is clean up. Got to wash your face, get ready for Sunday school. That means cleaning these streams, cleaning the banks and the streets and the roads, cleaning up the dumps, making ourselves look like we were a few years ago. And that's what pride is all about. And you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's taking advantage of the resources that are already there. These straight pipes, of which there are tens of thousands of them, were in former years past when people didn't have city water, it was okay to dump your dish pan out in the yard. It would run and drain into the creek eventually, but no big problem. But now we've run good city water to people, and they've got dishwashers and washing machines and commodes and whatever, and all that water is still going out that straight pipe into the creek except it's flowing pretty steady now. And that creek is getting to be full. And so it's time that we replace those straight pipes. First problem, where are they? How do you find a straight pipe way up yonder? Well, the satellites saw them. And we've got all of the straight pipes now logged into a computer and printed out on a map. And you can see in these 40 counties the hot spots where there's a bunch of concentrated straight pipes. And of course, there are places where you can't get to a sewer. They're way up yonder in the hill and holler. Hard to get to. Too expensive for a sewer. Sometimes the valley's too narrow or the rock's too hard to dig a septic tank. What do you do? Well, first we got the Corps of Engineers involved and now they're helping in these remote areas, 15 or 20 homes collect up their sewer and they're building a wetlands or a sand dune disposal program at low cost to dispose of the sewerage in those 15 or 20 homes so the straight pipes don't drop it in the creek. And they've got those projects going on now on all over called 531 projects. And then suppose you live way up yonder, away from a cluster, away from a sewer, too poor to dig a septic tank. What happens then? We got some money we'll loan you, almost interest free, over 10 years. We'll dig that septic tank and put it in to keep your straight pipe out of the creek and you've got 10 years to pay off, a, say, a $3,000 loan. 
and the pride is loaning out money like crazy, particularly in Harlan County, and installing septic systems like you wouldn't believe, and cutting out straight, cutting off straight pipes, right at the mouth of the creek, and it's working. That's some of the things that we're doing. We've already been able to secure about seventy million dollars for Pride. Sixteen point seven will come in next year's budget, and these resources are helping you make a difference. Communities are building sewer lines, new sewage treatment plants. The Corps is helping you build innovative systems for uh, remote uh, areas. And we're also working on education. You know, it's, our young people are going to save us. They're going to save us. They know how important it is, more than we do, about keeping our environment clean. And they're the ones that are pitching in by the tens of thousands to help clean. And they're going home and telling mom and dad about the need to keep trash out of our streams and off the hillsides. And I'm proud of the work that our young people are doing. I'm happy to report to you that Harlan County is receiving a lot of benefit from the Pride's Education Grant Program, where we give money to people who are putting on projects that educate people, especially young people. This year, over $30,000 in grant monies are going to be awarded to Cumberland Elementary, the Harlan County Board of Education, Kaywood Elementary, Kaywood High School, Harlan Middle, Everts High, and Holy Trinity Schools will share that money. And so I want to congratulate all of them for working hard on getting those grants for their youngsters to be educated. Lycus Mavanitas is here somewhere. Lycus, there he is. He's the, he's the pride uh, coordinator in Harlan County and his pride committee. I think a number of them are here with you, aren't they, Lycus? Raise your hand if you're on the pride committee of Harlan County. Yeah, there's several around. Thank you all for the great work uh, that you're doing here. And I think before it's over with, we, can say, we will be able to say that Harlan County is clean and pure like she once was. That's her goal. I'm here to celebrate with you on this great day as you uh, celebrate the end of the flooding in Harlan County and celebrate the cleanup campaign that you're such a leader in. Thank all of you for all the work over the years in making this day possible. Let's celebrate. Thank you, Congressman. <clears throat> we all know a, a family, a person, or a business that's been devastated by the years of flooding of the Cumberland River. Those were sad days for all of us in Harlan County. But out, but out of the rough times, we have found support through a team formed on a willingness to help all of us with our struggle against the mighty river. Through the Corps of Engineers, Harlan County, Congressman Rogers' Kentucky Pride team, this support was extended to all our local neighbors and relatives. And we'd like to recognize this support by asking Congressman Rogers and Honorable Joseph W. Westfall to step forward, please. As a token of our appreciation for all the hard work that you all have put into this, we, uh, we just want to say thank you and, and a little something to remember this day. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Please welcome again the boys' choir.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, thank you for coming today. It's truly been our pleasure to have you on hand as we celebrate the completion of the Harlan Flood Control Project. Please stand as Pastor Nathan Reed closes our ceremony with a benediction. Loving God, thank you for the work that has been completed and for the security it provides. We pray now for the work that is yet to be completed. We pray for safety and for speed. Lord, we have heard the call to personal responsibility. May we heed that call. Into your care we now depart. Amen. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>